Welcome back to Understanding Python. My name is Jake, and today I'll be talking about variable unpacking. Unpacking allows you to assign values to multiple variables at once, as well as split apart iterable objects. Variable unpacking is a great example of how flexible the Python programming language is. So with that, let's get started. For those new to this concept, we'll start with some basics. First, let's come up with two strings. Say Fred Flintstone. Notice that these are separated by a comma. Now, if we wanted to store these into variables, we would use variable unpacking. So what we can do is put an equal sign there and then put F underscore name and then L underscore name standing for first name and last name. And that will put Fred in the F name variable and Flintstone in the last name variable. But how exactly does this work? Why can you put two values on the right side as well as two variables on the left side? Well, let's fire up IPython. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and copy Fred Flintstone, and let's just save this to a variable called var1. So var1 is equal to Fred Flintstone. If we look at var1, we see that it's actually put into a tuple. So if we put type of var1, we see that indeed Python packaged them together in a tuple. Another way we could have expressed this is to have put our parentheses around Fred and Flintstone. We could have also have done the same to F name and L name. But with Python, we don't have to be that explicit. So for readability, we get rid of those. Now, not only can you do two at the same time, you can do as many as you want. So we'll do X, Y, Z is equal to one, two, three. This is a bit more common if you're working with point systems where X, Y, and Z would be points on the X, Y, and Z axis, each drawing their respective values on the right. So X would be one, Y would be two, Z would be three. This makes it a bit cleaner than referring to the same object and then referencing indexes of that object. Say for example, we had an object called point using zero for X, one for y, and then two for z. Here, x, y, and z are a lot more readable. So that's a nice thing to have, but the real power in this comes from what we can do with packing on the left side of this operation. So say that we had a string query to uaop, and we just wanted to get the first letter of this and store the rest in a remainder variable. Well, the way that we would do this, let's put a equal there, is say first and then star remainder. What it does is it tells Python that you want the very first value to be stored in the first variable and everything else you want lumped in remainder. And the reason why this works on strings is, again, because strings act a lot like lists. So with that, you could also use this on lists, tuples, and other iterable objects. Now, what if you wanted just the last value of query UAOP? We'll copy this again. And this time, we're going to flip this. So I'll put star, remainder, and then last. And that's going to equal query UAOP. So everything from the Q to the O will be stored in remainder, and then last we'll just store the P. Not only can you grab everything from the first part of it or the last part of it, you can group the remainder of the object in whatever position you want. So say so we had a list of one, two, three, four, five. Well, what we could do, of course, put our equal there, and we'll say first, comma, star, remainder, comma, last. And you guessed it, first is gonna store one, last is gonna store five, and the remainder is gonna store two, three, and four, 
as a list. Now one neat thing about this is that if there's not enough values to be stored in remainder, it'll just store it as an empty list. So say that you're getting an input where you ask people for their first name, middle initial, and last name. In this example, we'll have Ernest P. Worrell. And we're going to store F name, star, M name, and then L name. However, in order to get this to work, because normally what this would actually do, if we left it like this, is the E would be stored as F name, this last L would be stored as L name, and then everything else in between would be the M name. Obviously we don't want that, so we can combine this with strings split object, which if you remember from the string video, we'll default to using spaces. So this is going to split the string into a list with three values, Ernest, P, and Borel. So that's perfect. That's working exactly as expected. However, what if the person didn't have a middle initial? We could do the same exact thing. This time, since Ernest P. Worrell does have a middle initial, we use someone that I personally don't know if they have a middle initial. And that is Scooby-Doo. So if you were to run this, F name would be Scooby, L name would be Do, and then M name would be an empty list. So this way we can handle the event that there is no value for M name without running to any errors. This is a convenient way of not having to add additional logic to your code. You can assign all variables on one line and not have to check for missing values. Now one thing that comes up a decent amount is if someone wants to get the first key in a dictionary. So say we have a dictionary where we have A mapping to 1, B mapping to 2, and then C mapping to 3. And we wanted to get the very first key in the dictionary. Well, luckily for us, we can use the same practice of unpacking to get exactly what we want. So we'll say first, comma, then star, remainder. So first will give us the value of A, and remainder will be B and C. This is a really convenient way for getting just the first entry. You can also get the last or a series in the middle, or whatever you want as long as you're creative with the way that you unpack it. With that, we'll exit IPython, clear this out. I'm gonna add some print statements, and then we'll look at what happens. Our print statements are in place. Let's run this and take a look. All right, here we see in our first example, F name and L name being Fred and Flintstone. X, Y, and Z, of course, got the values one, two, and three. First, got the value of Q, and remainder became a list of the remaining values in this string. Then we started with remainder, which was the first values in the string up until the last one, which ended up being P. Then for the next example, we had first equaling one, remainder being a list of the values that are in the middle, two, three, and four, and then last being the final value in that little list of five. Then in our name example, we have F name equaling Ernest, the middle name, or the middle initial in this case, being a list with just a single value, P, and then L name being Worrell. For Scooby-Doo, we see F name was Scooby, M name became an empty list, and then L name being Doo. 
And then finally for our dictionary example, we had the first key being the value of A, with the remaining keys being B and C. For my beginners, this is a perfect setup for you to get into variable unpacking. However, if you want to stick around for the intermediate section, you're more than welcome, as it won't be too much of a jump from where we're leaving off. So what separates our beginner section from our intermediate section? Well, the biggest thing is going to be depth. Say for example, we have a list whose top value is 5, and then we have another list underneath of it with the values 1, 2, and 3. And we wanted to store each of these in their own values. Well, we can do that really easily with variable unpacking. As we did above, we can just keep the first value as is, and then to denote that we're going down a level, we'll put this in a list as well. And in here we can put the variables x, y, and z. Get rid of that extra space there. Now what's going to happen is 5 is going to get stored in top, and then it's going to go down a level with 1 being stored in x, 2 being stored in y, and then 3 being stored in z. So this is a convenient way not to just get things that are in the first or last or things that are in the middle, but a way to get values that are deeper in a nested iterable. All right, to expand upon our dictionary example earlier, we'll use the same dictionary this time. But instead of just getting the key, what if we wanted to get both the key and the value from this dictionary? Well, what we did above is we said first and then star remainder. Now to get both the key and the value, we will use the dot items method on the dictionary. And in this way, we can change first instead to use the tuple notation. So we can do f key, comma, f val. So this will give us both the key and the value from the very first entry in the dictionary. We can also use different combinations of depth and remainders. So let's create a new list with first value being five, and then a list underneath that, one, two, three, four, and since we've already used five, we'll make that six. And then on the top layer again, we'll continue with seven, eight, and nine. Now we can combine what we know to get the useful information out of this. So we'll say top and then dig into that list. We'll just get the first value, store a remainder for the middle values, and we'll also get the last value out of that. And then outside of here, we're going to get the end of that top list. So top will be 5, first will be 1, remainder will be 2, 3, and 4 as a list. Last will be equal to 6, and then end will be another list of 7 through 9. And finally, you can do the exact same thing with strings. So we'll put a number of strings in some tuple. First we'll put A, and then a tuple under that, where we'll have B. Then we'll make a slightly longer string with C, D, and E, followed by F. And we can dig into this by using what we already know. So top, and then we'll have X. And the way we can dig into that C, D, and E is to go down another level. And we'll say Y1, Y2, Y3. So now we're three levels deep. Finally, we'll store last. And here we'll have top equaling A, X will equal to B, Y1 will be C, Y2 will be D, and Y3 will be E. Finally, last equaling F. Okay, I'll add some print statements and we'll take a look at this.
All the print statements are in place. This has been saved. Let's run this. Forgot to change the header. We'll just fix that real quick. Make that intermediate. Save it, run it again. Here we go. Okay, so for example, with top and then underneath there, X, Y, and Z, we see top was five, X is one, Y, two, Z, three. So we went down a level without having any issues. Then we wanted to get the first key and the first value from a dictionary and just storing the remainder in just a toss away variable. So the first key was A and the first value was one. And then we have the rest of the dictionary just as a list of tuples. Then in our example of combining nesting and using remainders, we have top, first, remainder, and last. Finally, end with top equaling five, first equaling one. Remainder was a list of two, three, and four. Then we had last in that value equaling six. And finally, end equaling seven through nine. In our last example, we have our deeper nesting using strings, also expanding the strings in there as well. Top equals A, X, B, Y1, C, Y2, D, Y3, E, and finally last equaling F. So here we used multiple layers of nesting without a single issue, each getting assigned to the correct variable. Super convenient. And that wraps up this video. Now that you understand unpacking, you can make your code more readable and save a bit of time. What is your favorite unpacking trick? Or was it something I covered today? Leave a comment down below to let me know. As always, today's code will be added to the understanding GitHub repo. So check the description for a link. And of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment down below. To keep up with the series, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.